Happy New Year, Bitcoin Daily family. This is officially the first video of 2022 on this channel. I hope you guys had a great weekend and didn't get too hungover. I personally was pretty much useless the first day of the year, but I am well recovered and back again to tackle the year head on and make this year hopefully the best year. So today we're going to be looking at the charts yet again at what's been a pretty boring market for the last few weeks, right? Just a lot of consolidation without really any range. Just pretty much a bunch of consolidation without no sense of direction. You can see on the weekly chart, we've pretty much been stuck here for about six weeks now. And you'll see the bottom of the range is beginning to look something like this, which is currently where we're at, while the top of the range has been looking something like this, right below 52K basically. So last week's close was not very bullish and the monthly close was also not bullish at all. You can see here that last month we ended up down about 19% for the month of December. In November, we we're down about 7%. Definitely one of the worst performing November, December ends to the year that I can recall. We ended up down about 25% to close out the year. However, that is all now in the past and it is officially a brand new year. So today we're going to take a look at the charts, see what we could possibly expect on the first week of 2022. Take a look at some possibilities for trade setups. That's pretty much it. What else do you want? So let's dive right into today's video. Hey, what's up? Jay here and welcome to Bitcoin Daily, bringing you guys the best tips, tutorials and ideas to help you guys become profitable and successful investors. The goal of this channel is to empower you guys, the community with the knowledge and resources to help you get your wealth up to that next level. So if you guys are new to the channel, don't forget to subscribe, turn on notifications so you don't miss any videos. And of course, if you're here watching this video right now, smash that like button. Let's get this video to 100 likes. All right, guys, so let's first look at the monthly closing as we just closed the month of December. As you guys can see, down 18.9%. Not a good closing, but we did hold up here at that support level that we've been, you know, it's been a pretty large support here for the last one, basically one, two, three, four months at this point, right? So now we do need to stay above this green line here, this green area here. If we fall below, remember what happened last time, guys, that when we fell below, boom, we got stuck here. We're below it for about two months before we were able to get out. However, last time we had this long term ascending support that held us up and that's where we actually ended up getting that bounce back up. And that kept the higher highs, higher low intact. This, if we were to fall below this time around, not only would we lose that big uh, 42 to $40,000 level that's been holding us up, it's been a very critical support and a very critical resistance, but we're also losing this ascending trend line on the macro level. So if we were to lose that, it's basically a free fall at that point. And it's hard to know where we would bounce. My, my first thought would be down here where we bounced last time. So maybe here. And if we were to fall below that, we could go probably as low as this current 50 month moving average and that's sitting around that twenty thousand dollar level so that seems like it would be confluent with that previous all-time high from the 2017 bull run but it would do a lot of things that bitcoin has never done in history in its entire history if we were to see that type of drop here into a bear market. So therefore, I still do think that we hold above it. Um, and as long as we do, I am bullish. If we drop below that $40,000 level, then I am no longer bullish. I am bearish and I will be uh, probably shorting the market at that point because we could potentially free fall all the way down to uh, that 20, that 30 to $20,000 level. We don't want to see that. 
Now, if we zoom into the weekly here, you can see another red flag, guys. We closed yet again below that 50 week moving average. Remember, we it happened to us a couple weeks ago, and then the week after that, we had a almost 9% candle up on that week. But then last week, we got rejected very, very hard from that $52,000 resistance that we've been speaking about. So we ended last week below that level again. And at this point right now, the market is pushing even lower. So we have to see if we're going to continue in this range that we've been trading on, which basically has been between 45,000 to about $52,000. So if we're going to continue this consolidation within this range, then we're probably expecting to see a bounce here back to the top at some point soon, whether it's this week, next week, or the week after that, there's really no timetable on this. But the longer that we stay stuck here, the worse it is. The reason why is because the more and more we test a certain level, the higher the chance that we end up breaking through that level. So if we continue to retest 46, 45 K over and over and over, guess what guys, eventually the price is going to drop below there because there's not going to be enough people looking to buy there anymore. If we pull up the uh, volume shelves here, you can see that if we lose that $45,000 level, there's a drop off here. There's a big gap and this gap drops off from 45 all the way down to basically $40,000. That's basically this entire green area here. So if we are to lose this level, guys, I'm afraid that we drop lower and then at that point risk losing that 42 to $40,000. You can see currently prices are pushing back down under 46,000 and testing that $45,000 range. Now, hopefully we're just getting the lows of the week out of the way. That does tend to happen a lot on Mondays. You'll notice a lot of times Mondays will be the time that we hit the lows of the week and then we spend the rest of the week working our way back up. So I'm hoping that's the case here, but currently the market just does not look good right now. It just looks very, very weak and it's threatening to fall below this level, which I really, really don't like. Now, although I don't like that, what I do like is that we do have a lot of support at that 40 to $42,000 range. But what I'm afraid of is that if we fall below 45, we get stuck here and eventually drop even harder. So that's why I rather see prices just get back up, get out of this 45 to $46,000 range. We need to see the prices break back out and break above 52,000 so that we can continue up. You can see that the overall trend is, is still intact as we've had the, the higher high, higher low, higher high, higher low. So even if we do drop to 40 to 42, it's still a higher low from the low that we set last time, which is why I'm still bullish even if we were to drop down to this level and I still think we could break back up higher and set up a new all-time high. But at the same time, it's just... I don't like to see levels going this low because there is the probability and possibility that we break this level and fall even lower. And although these type of things haven't happened in history, it doesn't mean that it can't happen. There's always a possibility. Now, the good news here is that it is January, right? Hedge fund managers, people with a lot of money, their year to date return has reset today and is back to zero. So if they sold off anything to take, if they took any profits in November and December in order to close the year and realize those profits, then they're going to be looking to buy back into the market. Now, the thing with people with a lot of money, they don't exactly buy on exchanges. They like to do what's called OTC deals. So a lot of times when they do these OTC deals, they don't want to buy at market price. They want to buy a lot lower. So they might be looking at this and being like, I don't want to pay 45,000 for, for a Bitcoin. I want to get it at the bottom here. I want to get it at 40,000. I want to get it at 38. 
right? So these wells, if they all kind of get together and kind of plan the same strategy out and they all do the same thing at the same time, they could cause a big push to the downside so that they can get the coins for cheaper and then scare you know the majority the majority of people out and then bounce the market back up so that is something that tends to happen in markets and especially in the cryptocurrency market that is not regulated you have to be careful with and we have to be on the lookout for it. so i know i've given you guys a bunch of different bearish case scenarios but at the end of the day the macro trend is still on par it's still where it's supposed to be it hasn't we haven't fallen any lower um, so overall, I'm still bullish. I still believe we see a bounce. So not only is the macro trend still intact, but all the on-chain data is still pointing to the same thing, still saying mi miners are not currently selling, they're accumulating. That's usually bullish. All the old coins are still not selling. They're still not moving. It's mostly new coins that are moving. And as you guys know, all these long-term indicators that have uh, called the top, the cycle peaks, have not yet done so here. And as we spoke about last week, the NVT is still signaling a buy here at its current level. So some trade setups that we're going to be watching this week here in the market as we bring in the new year. We're definitely looking at this. If we see a break below 45,000, we are considering taking a short position with targets of around 44, 43, $42,000. So we would be taking profits every thousand dollars that it moves down and we would probably be um, cutting our losses if it were to bounce back up and above forty five thousand dollars at that point you can even uh completely flip your position and close out your short and open a long position there and try to hopefully get a bounce entry that leads you back up to that top both of these trades are risky, so make sure to manage your risk appropriately. Make sure to use small position sizes and low leverage here. Other than that, I really don't like anything here to enter a trade unless we break back above 50,000 for Bitcoin right now. Everything is just so ugly right now that I probably won't take any other trades other than those two until we at least get above 50,000. I like to take a breakout above that. And then of course a breakout above 52 is the most ideal breakout that I'm looking for. So all in all, right now you probably shouldn't be entering any trades you should just kind of be sitting back watching spending your time learning because the more you learn in the long run the more you will earn so it's best to play it safe and just wait for the market to pick a side or pick a direction here right now there is just we're trading within this range as you guys can see we could definitely get something else like this which would be kind of a w bounce here but still it is a risky position and a risky entry so if you are taking trades make sure just to use at least proper risk management thank you guys so much for tuning into the first video of 2022 this week we will do a few more tutorials and reviews and then of course at the end of the week we will do another market breakdown and see where we're at if you guys enjoyed this video make sure to smash that like button let's try to get this video up to 100 likes if you guys are new to the channel, don't forget to subscribe, turn on notifications so that you don't miss any of the videos. That's pretty much it for today. Happy New Year's, everyone. I'll see you on the next one. As always, peace and love.